Hi, I'm Heather Farley with the TSA Historian Program, and we're here today with another episode of Did You Know? Today, we're going to talk about our peace officers, our SCARI marshals, our quiet professionals, the Federal Air Marshal Service, also called FAMS. Established in the 1960s in response to a number of political hijackings, they've evolved over the years to protect all modes of transportation. Today, we'll share with you a number of artifacts from our historic collection, starting right now. Hey, Heather. Hey, Justin, what are you wearing with today? I've got some training gear that the FAMs use in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Really important artifact for our collection, showing how the training and how much effort they put in to maintain that really rigorous physical presence. Uh, really important part of our collection, thanks. I'm joined with Ethan Skelly, a member of the TSA Historian team, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the history of the Federal Air Marshals. So how did the Federal Air Marshals start? So actually, the Federal Air Marshals have a long and illustrious history before joining TSA when we were established after the events of September 11th. In the 1960s, there were a spate of hijackings with political motivations, and in response to that, the Air Marshals were created. Could you tell them more, more about the photo? Yeah, this photograph is a really unique piece of history. It's that original cadre of federal air marshals at the time they were called peace officers. 18 people who went through that initial training and they were sworn in by Robert F. Kennedy. So this is a really great snapshot of the establishment of the federal air marshals as we know them today. Um, and their anniversary is in March of 1962. So they just went through their 60th anniversary last year. So how did their history change over the next 60 years? Really interesting transitions. They started under customs and they were called peace officers. A little bit after that, they were called sky marshals. And then after that is when they became federal air marshals. The badges really shows the transition. So you can see um, a lot of the original badges have that FAA emblem on them. We have examples with ICE. And ultimately they ended up at the Federal Aviation Administration right before the events of September 11. Why did they change so much? They changed so much because they were always responding to the threats that were happening in the real world to meet the need on the ground. Um, at the events of September 11th, uh, there were only 33 federal air marshals in service. And after that, um, the first year of TSA being created, one of our top focuses was really building out the federal air marshal service. And we hired hundreds of new federal air marshals that first year of TSA standing up the agency. How did working with TSA change the federal air marshals? They really became the law enforcement arm here at TSA. Right after September 11th, we started hiring. We had received over 200,000 applicants that first year for people wanting to join the Federal Air Marshal Service. We hired hundreds of marshals. Around that time, they moved to ICE, Immigration and Custom Enforcement. And then in 2005, they came back to serve as that law enforcement agency here within TSA. joined with Justin Kelly, our associate historian and an important member of our TSA historian team. We have some more Federal Air Marshal memorabilia in front of us, um, including this training gun. Can you tell us a little bit more about this red gun? This is called the red gun. This simulated firearm is designed to mimic the size and the weight of an actual firearm. So this is uh, models the Sig Sauer P229, which is the former service weapon that the FAMs use. They currently use a different model. It's important that they use the simulated firearm because it's a tight space that the FAMs are working in, right? Aircraft cabin with simulated passengers, this eliminates the issue that could result from using a live firearm in that environment. Yeah, it's really impressive because it is so realistic. It really has the same look and feel of an actual firearm. Really important that it's uh, noted as a training weapon with that uh, bright red color. Right. Um, and really an important part of that really in-depth training that all of our FAMS members go through. Thank you so much for telling us about this handgun. You're welcome. I'm here with Rochelle, our collections manager, a member of the TSA Historian Program. Uh, around us today, we have a variety of different types of threat assessment targets. Can you tell me about them? A variety of threat assessment targets were used um, during an initial FAMS officer's training period. For example, these targets were used on training airplanes that were decommissioned, and these were placed onto the seats. And as a FAM officer would go through the fuselage and through the seating area, they would learn how to assess a target and how to take down targets. And these training mannequins, for example, would have objects placed in their hands. For example, training firearms, that way a FAMS officer would know what was the target, what is the threat, and what is a bystander. And these were used in between the period of 
2000 to 2012, and they were donated to the Historian Program. They show a lot of wear and tear. They've definitely been through a few training scenarios in their lifetime. Uh, really grateful that we got this transfer from the Federal Air Marshal Training Center in Atlantic City. What about these other targets? These are board threat assessment targets, and they're a little bit different than the mannequins. These are easier to maneuver, easier to put on planes, but they also do show what is a threat and what is a bystander. And as you can see, instead of just having a mannequin holding um, a model firearm, these have been printed to show bombs, firearms, all sorts of potentially dangerous weapons that could be carried by an individual on a plane. Thank you. We're wrapping up today's episode with our final selection of Federal Air Marshal memorabilia. We're really lucky today to have a number of items that were donated to us from Daniel Baber, who donated these materials in 2021, um, but they really represent his career with TSA, including a plaque from when he went through Federal Air Marshal training in 2002, and uh, just a variety of things, including coins, badges, and some of his uniform items. And what are the coins represent? Yeah, the coins are a great collection, both from Daniel and from the studio's collection. We have the little shields uh, pin, we have the original coin with the logo, and we have one of the London office pins that really highlight the joint task force and the joint nature of a lot of the operations that the Federal Air Marshals do, both um, internationally and domestically. It's great Dan was able to donate so many good artifacts to our collection. Why is it important that people donate? It's really valuable to TSA as an agency that our members donate to the historian program so that we can really document their experiences. The Federal Air Marshal Service has over 60 years protecting the nation, and it's really important for us to have that firsthand experience so that we can collect it, preserve it, and share it for future generations. Uh, really excited to have these artifacts as part of our program to really document what it's like to work as a Federal Air Marshal and within TSA. So if you have any historic materials that you could donate to the TSA historian program, please reach out. Ethan, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about our FAMS artifacts, and I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Did You Know? Mm -hmm.